I'm here today, still in my hotel room, getting ready for the 2022 State Wrestling Tournament to begin tomorrow, where four of my wrestlers will be competing. But I've got another episode of Back Points to share. This next episode is with the great Steve Kelleher, who was a three-time state champion. And he was very inspirational to me personally, because I remember watching him win his first state title when I was a new wrestler my freshman year in high school. He shares some great insights about what led him to be successful, and I'm sure that his story will help a lot of wrestlers who want to do well. As always, don't forget to support our sponsor by buying Buddy Lee Jump Ropes. If you're going to jump rope, I don't know why you'd want to use anything else. So go to BuddyLeeJumpRopes.com and order some jump ropes. Now, let's hear from three-time state champion Steve Kelleher. He taught me to get up when I didn't want to get up, when I wanted to quit. I had high goals, man. I've always had high goals. And so when I won it, I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, you guys are right. So it's not the thrill of winning. It's the joy of having that personal goal and being able to achieve that and walk off the mat with your head held high and with your hand up. That just fueled my fire. And I was in every state championship match from there on until I graduated. That was when I really started doing the kind of wrestling that I was capable of. Anybody that steps in the ring and just decides to commit the entire time is a state champion in my, in my book. Welcome back to another episode of Back Points. I'm here today with the great Steve Kelleher. I didn't bother writing an introduction for Steve because his career overlapped with mine, so I remember it well. Steve was a three-time state champion at Lake Braddock High School, and he is, uh, was one of the most talked about wrestlers, very feared wrestler at the time. And so we're going to jump in, hear all about what it was like wrestling in high school for him. How did he, uh, how did he prepare for high school? And then if we're lucky, you might hear a little bit about his, his career post, uh, post high school. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So why don't we start uh, at the beginnings? How did you get into wrestling? I got into wrestling uh, because my, my dad came home one day and told me uh, that he signed me up and I had no clue exactly what that meant. I probably had, uh, I'm, I'm quite confident I had more of a vision of uh, turnbuckles and, and WWF at the time um, yeah, here in, in the eighties and whatnot. But uh, yes, I was picturing body slams and this, that, the other. And, um, and as it turns out, that, that wasn't it at all. But so I was, I was probably more excited when it, when I got told that I was starting wrestling and then, uh, they got to practice and it's like, whoa, what's, what is this? Um, so it's a little bit of a shock, but yeah, uh, that's what got me into it. And then from there, just uh, little by little, uh, season by season, kept working at it. Uh, How old? That was when I was uh, seven. Seven. Okay. So you started at, at seven. Okay. Very, very cool. And then was that originally, was that with the bandits? It was actually originally with Springfield Youth Club. And then the bandits, I want to say got formed uh, a number of the parents got together and, and created sort of a separate club just for wrestling. Um, so at the time, a lot of the Northern Virginia leagues were broken out into sort of the, the area you were in. So you had Springfield youth club, you had Braddock road youth club, you know, you had these different teams and whatnot. So the bandits, and they all, they all had different sports. They had their football team and like this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the bandits were, were focused only on wrestling. And so a number of parents got together to start that. And I, I want to say that was probably in my, maybe uh, third season, second or third season. And then that, that attracted, ended up attracting people from other clubs. I see. I see. So um, it, it was your dad a wrestler? Sorry, whoops. I was breaking up there. What's the, what was your dad? Was your dad also a wrestler? He was, uh, he, he wrestled in high school. So I, uh, I, I used to get that question a lot because he, he was uh, coaching and he was certainly my coach. Um, but, but yeah, he, he wrestled in high school at a small, small high school in Wisconsin. So nothing, uh, nothing big there. Um, I wish I had some great accolades to say, oh yeah, you know, he, he uh, tore up the Wisconsin uh, wrestling scene back in the, the late sixties or seventies or whatever it may be. Um, but, but that wasn't the case. And I, I think what, what he had was, was more a passion for, um, I, and the passion for wrestling, but I think a passion for sports and, and sort of the, the things that came with it and the focus and discipline and all that stuff. And wrestling is definitely one that, that checked those boxes. Yeah. So I, I think that's, uh, that's what interested him. And I think he had more experience sort of with that and coaching and ability to pick up on that than he did with, um, with other sports, you know, maybe football or whatnot. Not to mention he had a son that, that uh, wasn't destined to be you know, a linebacker or anything. So <laughs> football wasn't, sure. wasn't necessarily in the cards. So wrestling, 
wrestling fit well for that. Okay. So what, what, t- tell me about your, um, your pre high school career and training a little bit, you know, who did you, did you have really good practice partners in youth wrestling? You know, um, did you have uh, any particularly influential coaches or before you were in high school? Yeah. So, so backing up to, um, that's, that's a ways back now, but, uh, backing up to, to my youth league wrestling. So it sort of started, um, at the time Springfield youth club, I was seven and, and there was what was called sort of the, the federation kind of wrestling, um, where it was sort of the weekend tournaments and, and different teams brought their folks to them and you'd have sort of round robins or maybe some, some uh, brackets and whatnot. Um, and then, then you had a different level that was the select league. Um, and, and so I think, um, you know, and I guess we'll get into that in a minute, but, uh, so my first season, I, I basically got beat up on, um, which was a, a good experience, not at the time, but looking back, it was a good experience. Um, it gave me reason to get a little better and a little better. And, and by my second season, I had started to, to turn from where I was <laughs> never winning a tournament. I don't think I won a single tournament my first year to, to maybe I got some, maybe I got a win on, on a tournament here or there. Maybe I got some seconds and stuff like that. It was really by my third season that I, I started to sort of see where we're, you know, winning those tournaments on the weekends at that, that um, the, the more junior level was something that was something I could accomplish. And so at that point, I, um, I got asked to join um, uh, the Springfield Youth Club team at the time um, that was the travel team. And that was with folks like, um, you know, uh, Brandon Rushing, uh, Blake Rushing, Glenn Foster, um, some other folks that, that did really well for themselves in, um, in high school and then beyond too. Um, and so, so that's really what, what started me down the path of, of you know, wrestling turned from more of a, a weekend kind of thing or, you know, um, more junior level to, to that, that uh, higher level. And so from there, um, you know, through eighth grade, um, that, that was, that, that turned into my sport. That's what I did. Um, I had a lot of success there. Um, we had a, we, we had tournaments where in the capital area wrestling league, so basically around the DC um, Beltway, we'd have different teams and whatnot that would come together, different travel teams. And so capillary wrestling league tournaments, they did well there. And then what we would do is take the, um, the top people from there and have a Maryland, Virginia state championship. So you take sort of the, the Maryland teams, which are always solid teams. A lot of those names too went on to do extremely well for themselves, uh, in high school and beyond. Um, and so I had success there in my last four years, I was fortunate enough to, to win for the Maryland, Virginia state titles. So that's really what led me into, into high school. And, uh, and then, then high school obviously changed the game again because it's a different level. And, and now, yeah, you're wrestling people the same weight, but, you know, you're, you're 14 and they might be 18. And, and a lot happens between the ages of 14 and 18, you know. So, uh, so yeah, it changed, changed up again, but it's a new challenge. And, and that's, that's what sort of took me through youth until uh, through high school. In terms of coaches, um, my, my dad was my coach for the most part. I mean, we had other coaches, but the guy that you ride home with and, you know, we had wrestling mats in the basement. So we'd be working nights and weekends or whatever. Um, that's really who, who uh, I would say spent the most time with the most, but certainly the most influential. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. So you, but you said something I want to dig into. So you had wrestling mats in the basement. Yeah. Um, we did. So was that his idea? It was. That was probably another thing where it was like, you know, a truck backing up one day and it was like, oh yeah, wrestling mats are getting delivered. Um, <laughs> right. And, and yeah, they, they weren't, they weren't, you know, those blue foldable mats that like maybe they roll out in the gym or something like that. I mean, they were, they were wrestling mats. It was, a, it was a size for the space that we had in the basement, but pretty big in the scheme of things. And I remember too, in order to get them to fit well, we had a, uh, like a lolly column in the basement as basements typically yeah. do. And and I, I think he had to like switch out a, an I-beam or switch from like something, you know, it's like a, a new metal beam so that it could carry the load and not have this I-beam like right in the middle. Um, <laughs> That's pretty and so, uh, yes, I do remember that. It was a uh, no, no drywall. It was a you know, frame stud wall. And so you had to, you had to be careful. I mean, if you're like driving somebody out, like you have a great with like three and a half inches of stud right yeah. in front of it. Um, but it was big enough that, uh, yeah, you could roll around at the time. I was probably, you know, 50 pounds, but a lot bigger than, than than it would now yeah uh, but yeah that we and then we'd have people over so it's like you know on the weekends if they come over we're gonna work out that's awesome did um okay so what was his coaching style like was he you know was, did he did he you know pressure you to really excel did he kind of you know did he encourage that was you know what 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 was can you describe his coaching style 
or maybe just parenting style? I think, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, the, 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 those could be different, but um, coaching style, I would say, would be, would, would be serious, sort of taking things seriously. Um, definitely wasn't one that, you know, with like joking around and practicing kind of thing. It was like when you're in the practice room, we take it seriously. And then, then, then trying to sprinkle in some fun here and there to keep it, keep it uh, mixed up. Yeah. But um, but but never never like mixing the fun with with uh with like the working out parts. It was, it was very technical. It was very um, it, w- it wasn't flashy in terms of like, hey, we're gonna go lose and learn ten new moves or something like that. Right. A lot of our success on the bandits, or at least from my perspective, came from the fact that we sort of had had a system. Um, and it was like this is what this is what we do. Um, everyone had their own their own background and their own styles and whatnot. But but it was a consistent kind of approach to things, and so. Yeah, big focus on repetition. I guess if I could pick one thing, it'd be repetition, 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 mm. making sure that you're doing it right. Um, and so a lot of the time, you know, spent in the practice room and then also spent, <laughs> spent in my own basement was, was just repetition. Um, so I, I think that was probably the biggest thing is, is recognizing, I think he recognized, and I'm glad he did, and, and part of that to me is you know, how you practice is how you perform. Yeah. And so you, you want to make sure that, that, um, that you're practicing right. Um, it reminds me that, you know, practice makes perfect, but where I think more than his mentality is practice makes permanent. And so you need to make sure that, that, uh, you know, that, that you, you have perfect practice makes perfect. Um, and so if you're, you're going to joke around and practice, uh, you should sort of expect those kind of results when, when you wrestle. I see. So he, and he, so he kind of helped ingrain that, that idea into you that practice makes permanent, you know, you take it seriously and you'll get better. Yeah. It was really about the progress and, and uh, progressing and, and this kind of like, you know, just keep do it, do it, do it. I remember having tape on the mat actually for like different takedown movements and stuff. And it'd be like, this is, wow. this is what it is. You know, you sort of hop back a little bit, your feet are here, you know, and then it's like, okay. And then, then their foot moves up because now, now their weight's on their foot. And so it's a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, you know, it's movement and, and moving your opponent and, and uh, yeah, so a lot of focus there, and and again, repetition to make sure you got it, got it that, down. Yeah, that's really insightful. I think that's that that's that starts to really paint a good picture of kind of what that pre high school training was all about. You know, it's really technical. You know, back in the '90s, um, you know, everybody in the wrestling world. I mean, I, you know, Dan Gable was, I think, everything for most most wrestlers, um, or for many of them in America anyway, and. Um, you know, he was all about grinding and about, you know, really just pushing, you know, endurance is everything and mental toughness is everything. How did that enter into your training? Like, did you think, was that an influence? Yeah. So at the time, I mean, of course, everyone knows Dan Gable. Everyone knew Dan Gable. Um, you know, everyone knew Iowa at the time. Uh, the, I, I would say at the time, it wasn't that mentality of that, like the, at least the grinding in the sense of like, yeah. you know, beating people up and, and just pushing through it and weights and cardio and everything like that. So I do maybe, maybe uh, if not for, for explicit fun and games and practice, there was an aspect of, of working that, uh, that, that he certainly didn't want to like have, have anybody get burnt out um, okay. or where you're like, why am I doing this kind of thing? Um, so, so there, there was, yeah. I, I would probably say an age appropriate level of that, you know, okay. you, you, you want to make sure uh, kids are tough, mentally tough. Um, but yeah, you know, for, for seven, eight, nine year olds, a different level than, you know, uh, Iowa Hawkeye program in the, <laughs> the early nineties kind of thing. Well, you know, I think whenever you hear about um, somebody taking that Iowa Hawkeye approach with somebody that's, you know, between seven and 10 in particular, it's usually talked about as a mistake and, you know, just something that you 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 know you would want to avoid typically. So it's not surprising to hear that that you know that that wasn't that that was not the the influence. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, certainly respect everything that they did, and then later sure. later on, you know, as you you sort of get to a different level, that does become more of the mindset of yeah. not to say beating people up, but um, you know, basically going out with with a um sort of uh the right mindset and and dominating and 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 then more importantly than than going out you know on the weekend or that dual match of the tournament is everything that leads up to it because a lot of that i mean that's that's the part that stands out to me as sort of separating people is is yeah, everyone wants to win on the weekend everyone wants to win at the tournament yeah. but but it's that grinding and it's the, the everything that you're putting in behind the scenes that people don't see that it's like that that, that makes a difference and so i can certainly respect um you know, that, that approach definitely as you get a little bit older. 
absolutely. Bit. Oh yeah, for, for sure. Um, so, um, so why don't we, why don't we move into the, the high school years? So, um, so you, so interesting about you, you know, you started, I think you were 103 your freshman year. Is that right? I was, yeah. I was a, yeah. I was a little guy. Yeah. You're, you're a little guy and those, and the 103 pound weight class is generally younger. You know, it's not, you know, or may, not always. I mean, sometimes you'll get seniors and juniors that are, that are 103, but you know, you placed fifth as a freshman. Um, and if I recall correctly, well, where a, a, in the state tournament uh, as a, as, oh, a, no, as a freshman yeah, state tournament. No, I, uh, the state tournament, my freshman year, I broke my collarbone, my first match. Um, oh, so I was, I was out my very first match. Okay. So, okay. Well, I always make at least uh, one mistake. Percent. Yeah. I make at least one mistake uh, per episode. Right. So hopefully that was the only one. Well, fifth would have probably sounded better than yeah, going out after my first match. No, I had a uh, my freshman year. I, I had a had a good run. Um, you know, I, I won districts. I, I got to the regional finals, and unfortunately, I lost to tough guy Brandon Calderwood. I got to avenge that loss the next year, but um, but very tough guy. And so I went down to states, and and yeah, I was thinking, okay, you know, at first time of the state tournament, I hadn't hadn't done that before, and it was re- felt ready to go. But then yeah, uh, ended up I was got got picked up and then i don't know i'll call it uh in between you know me me trying to sort of like gramby and somebody bring me down landed right here and just yeah broke, broke my collarbone so i see I, I don't think i've broken too many bones in that that was definitely a memorable one yeah that's a particularly painful bone to break i've heard yeah having not broken too many others i i, I would agree i i remember <laughs> the time it didn't feel too pleasant now i guess yeah. it stalls a little bit but uh yeah at the time it didn't feel it didn't feel very good what was the? Um, it also didn't feel very good coming down to the state tournament, and then you know here you are like two minutes into your first match. It's like that's 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 how this ends. Yeah. Um. I mean, looking back, I guess I don't know. I, I uh, that year Bobby Ingram won 103. That was he was a very tough guy. Um, yeah. You know, as, as optimistic as I am, I I uh, I don't know that I could convince myself that like oh if I just wouldn't have broken my collarbone, I would have had a shot there. <laughs> um. But uh. Yeah. So before we keep going on, on that, let, let's actually, why don't we talk a little bit about your, your optimistic look, you know, outlook and, you know, when, when you would go, yeah. so before every match, how did you, you know, how did you tend to feel or how did you, did you have a, a mindset that you tried to, to kind of create before getting on the mat? I think so, so yes, definitely. I, you know, that probably evolved throughout the years. Um, but I, but I think that, biggest thing that I take away from you know that and what I remember is um is very focused um and and confident and um yeah ha- having having a, just an extreme belief in yourself um you know if, if you're putting in the time and you're, you're doing that stuff and especially if you start to see the results of you know you put in the time you're getting the win that it snowballs on itself and and so then then when you're you're getting ready for a match and you're sort of getting in the zone and blocking out everything else um yeah it's just a different a different state just forgetting about everything else knowing that you put in the work knowing what you're going to go out yeah. and do um however hard it may be and and so yeah i i don't know if i'd go so far as state trance like but all, you know, just trying to block out all distractions yeah and even even during the match um you know one of the funny things i remember is is uh not being able to hear anything except for my dad and so it could be the noisiest thing ever and you, I, I wouldn't hear anything. It's just sort of like you're there for like one purpose and, and um, not to go too, you know, too, too far down that rabbit hole. But I, I actually remember one match uh, in particular at West Potomac High School. If I recall correctly, it was a guy by the name of Abdul Kamara. And, um, and I don't really remember the results of the match. I, I, I'm pretty confident I ended up winning that. But I remember at one point in the match, um, it, it, he, he was in a double leg, picked me up, and, and I, I could hear for a second. I could hear everything. And I remember thinking in that split second, like, this is, this is strange. As I'm probably about to get, like, taken down. This is strange. I can, like, hear, I, I hear a lot of noise right now. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how much of a difference that was to be able to hear things. That's how odd that was, that you could have, like, a split second of match getting taken down and saying, this, something's not right here. Um, so anyway, so yeah, it was very, very much focused, very much. Uh, Fascinating. You know, what, focus on what, what you're there to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and now there are, 
you know, techniques around meditation and mindfulness and, really? you know, that, you know, where we proactively try to create, you know, sort of a trance like kind of focus, you know, you know, as, as you know, it sounds a lot like something, you know, what you would, you know, experience when you were out there wrestling. So that's, that's pretty interesting. I don't doubt that. Now I feel like things are so, so far advanced uh, during meditation as part of that diet, I feel like is another thing. Not to say diet wasn't, you know, a thing back then, but it was more focused on just weight as opposed to now I feel like, you know, people understanding maybe, maybe it just being more broadly available, you know, if you do proteins or carbs and yeah. healthy fats and stuff like that at the time, it's like, yeah, yeah okay, just, yeah, but just make sure you have energy and, and, and you're on weight kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now I feel like everything's so much more advanced. Well, maybe I think there's, there's a lot of truth in that. It is, it is super advanced now, but, you know, in there's a select group of elite wrestlers who really take advantage of all of that. And, and I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think, I think in some ways all wrestlers now benefit from the advances, but, but certainly it favors the folks who are just as obsessed as can be with succeeding and with growing their, to their own potential, because you're right. There are so many resources out there. There's really no excuse for not knowing everything about nutrition and about recovery and all of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I think about the internet, even sharing that I, um, you know, I, I got a, a load dropped off at my house from, uh, from my parents as you know, they were, they're uh, clearing their house out. And so I have, of Ken Churto's, you know, videotape series. I have the Granby videotape series. I mean, you'd have to like buy these videotapes to like see what other people are doing. I got my uh, my own high school and youth league tapes and you'd have all this stuff. And now, now it's at the click of a button. You know, yeah. you see, uh, you go online, you can go watch tournaments and technique and it's, yeah. it's, it's really out there at the time. That, that just wasn't the case. So, so the thing that I'll point out to that, and then I want to get back to, to your, your career, but the, the thing I'll point out on that is with the wrong mindset, you know, if you, if you uh, are wrestling today, it's, it's actually really a problem because, you know, you, you described how, you know, your dad and, and, the, and, and your program had, you know, developed a real system of wrestling. It wasn't just about the flashy movements. It wasn't just about, you know, it was really about sound fundamentals that you perfected. You know, if you don't understand the importance of having that focus, the problem is nowadays, you'll take a Go little on. from column A, a little from column B, you know, and you'll just be, you know, a mile wide, an inch deep. And, and you won't benefit from anything. Well, you won't benefit from all the great stuff that's out there. So I do think that that, you know, it, it, probably always, but definitely now having that, that mindset and that understanding that you really need to, uh, you know, to, to focus on your foundation. Um, I think that it's, it's just completely critical because there's just too much information out there otherwise. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of basic stuff too, you know. If you, again, back to that flashy kind of thing. Those are fun fun to watch for sure. But um, a lot of this stuff, there, there, there's some basics that um, you get those right, and and you'll go a long way. And, and that'll take you that'll take you pretty far. And then and then it's like okay, once you're here, yeah, maybe you need to expand on that a little bit. But I mean, simple things, the ankle pins, like off the uh, off the uh, the whistle, you're on top. It's like you want if I if I were teaching a team now, it's like I remember just drilling that over and over, you know, over and over and over. And you can always switch out and, and say, okay, hey, we're going to do this. But like, that was one thing off the whistle. It'd be like, know what you're doing. And that's, that's, a, that's really easy, you know, to, to teach a room that you don't, you don't need to teach people anything too flashy. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that'll, that'll go, you know, that, that sort of 80, 20 rule that'll, that'll get you to 80. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's keep going through your, your high school career. So, so your freshman year, you hurt your, you know, you broke your collarbone at the state tournament. So that was obviously a disappointment at the end of the season. How long, how hard was that recovery? You know, were you out for months or what? It was probably six, it was probably six weeks or so. And, okay. you know, in a, in a sling and whatnot, and then a little bit to get back into it. Um, but no, not, I wouldn't say, you know, um, you know, two, three months or something like that. It was, it was probably a month and a half before you could start rolling around again. So, okay. So um, now by the next season, I don't even think that was a factor. Okay, so so now you're starting to answer another important question, which is: It sounds like you were a year-round wrestler. I would say so. I mean, it, there are different points in the year where it's, it's a little bit easier to to get matches in, but certainly after the season, you know, it's been certainly after the youth league season, you could do sort of mid-Atlantic type wrestling, yeah. um, you know, freestyle, 
uh, Greco. I didn't really get too much into Greco, but working out, rolling around. Um, and then later it started to get more into like clubs and whatnot where yeah, people would be wrestling folk style and, and yeah. drill, working out and drilling and whatnot. whatnot. Um, so yeah, you yeah, different parts of the year might be a little bit tougher, but, but um, certainly for the majority of the year, trying to get in and, and roll around at least a few yeah. times a week. Yeah. So, so from a training perspective, you know, you would, you know, you'd roll around, you know, pretty much year round, you know, but not as intense, you know, of course, at, at all times of the year. And then you would do a fair amount of competitions in, in, in the, in the traditional off season as well. Yep. I, I would actually say less on the competitions. And again, I, I guess I have to think back to how many competitions were available. I think about yeah. the mid Atlantic when I was in youth league and so you could go that route, um, you know, freestyle, there's Fargo, North Dakota, you could go out for, yeah. um, but, but I don't recall there being, you know, call it like July and August. Kind of, I don't remember it being like a weekly trip to go to right. some tournament. Um, yeah. So that, that was more rolling around, but if it was available, you know, that was something to yeah, stay busy with. And then when, when you weren't getting ready for that next, um, competition yeah it was more just rolling around with people drilling yeah uh, live wrestling and stuff like that staying in shape um cool yeah okay so um okay so then um so talk about your sophomore year what was it what was that what was that year like you know you came back off the injury you didn't feel the you know you were fully recovered um and since you were a three-time state champion obviously that was the first year that you ended up winning the state tournament so what what was that year like in general I think it was a good year. I mean, I, I had looked at my freshman year, say for the fact, say, say for the fact that I broke my collarbone. Um, I had looked at that as a, as a pretty reasonable year. I, um, I didn't do as well as I had wanted to at the Northern Region Classic Tournament. I think I ended up taking fifth that mm-hmm. freshman year. Um, so I remember a couple losses there. And, and then so going into my sophomore year, I, I think it was more knowing that you know, here I was in a, in a different sort of um, – different level in terms of high school and stuff like that but knowing that I could do it I'd I'd done it the year before and so you know I went out if I recall correctly I I won the Northern Region Classic that year so that's always a good feeling get a get a good early win in like uh, December if I recall and then um, had success through dual season and then um, ended up winning districts got to uh, get back to regionals which which um, you know if I was wrestling Brandon Calderwood again this is at 119 now um and so that was that was a, probably a, a memorable memorable part of my my sophomore year is getting back to the regional finals. He was in the regional finals and going, okay, so I've, I've seen this before. I was in the regional finals last year. He was a broad run. So we didn't didn't ever wrestle them in duels or districts. So this was like the, the, the next time I'd seen seen him. And um and so I you know thankfully was able to uh, to do well in that match and um and that set me up well going into states and. I, I, I can't say I remember every match at states. I'd have to go pull out a bracket, but um, but yeah, I remember just sort of methodically marching through there. I I, I did not have a super exciting um, you know, finals match. I was wrestling a guy by the name of Matt Epps from uh, Atlee, mm-hmm. and I think the score was probably two to one or something like that. So I remember yeah, so it being it either wasn't a blowout. Yeah, go on. Yeah, what wasn't a blot? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like Mac Gallagher kind of style where I was like tuned in to see like what crazy thing happened, um, yeah. you know, or any of that. But uh, but but that that was more that was more how I, how I wrestled, especially then, and it was more like you know, more methodical. And so I got that, and yeah, it was it was a great feeling. Um, yeah. Like wow, okay, uh, I did that. I don't know that I had my my sight set on that per se, um, you know, just the state championship, but it was more that methodical approach of just every getting better, getting better, winning that next match, getting ready for the next match, next match. And then, then you, you get to the end and it's like, Oh, okay. I, I, I was able to do that. Um, so, so yeah, I was, I was happy with the way that season went. So, so you mentioned that, um, you weren't, you don't, you're not positive that you set that as a goal your sophomore year. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't really ever recall setting that as a goal ever. Um, okay. I don't, I don't really set goals that way. Um, I guess maybe that's different than how people traditionally say, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to be a state champion. I, that's one of those things where I, I may, maybe that's in the back of your head. And if you do everything right, that's, that's the culmination. Cause, cause you know, you, you, yeah. you want all your matches at the, that tournament and whatnot. But I, I think that I, I tend to break things down into smaller pieces um, and, and approach it that way, you know, that, that you're making sure you get your practice in that you're getting ready for that match on the weekend or the tournament on the weekend, um, that you're, that you're learning from what you did 
at that to get better for the next week. And I remember watching um, tapes again, these, these are like high eight tapes back in the day. Um, and although it was never fun going through a loss, you know, where you'd you know, sit down with my dad and we'd go through what, what, what did you do wrong here? What, what could you have done here? What did he do that you didn't see? You know, that kind of thing. And uh, slow motion and sort of that grainy kind of uh, mm-hmm. old television thing. And, uh, but, but I, I also remember it never being fun. <laughs> um, I don't think my video watching experience is ever fun, but uh, never really being fun on the wins because here I was, you know, it's like, well, I know, but I, but I, I won that match. And it'd be, yeah, but here, here's something that, you know, you, you messed up. If you're, if you're wrestling the right person, they're going to catch that. And, and I, yeah, I, I remember plenty of times where it's like, well, like, what's the deal? Like, I, you know, Hey, I won. Like, can't, can't we just be happy with that? And so, so a lot of it on the goal setting is more making sure you're doing all that stuff. And if you're doing that, and you keep marching forward, it really just becomes more of a culmination than it does the yeah. goal. It also gives you, along the way, a chance to take stock where you are, you t- take credit when you're yeah. doing well, adjust if you're not doing well. So yeah, I don't ever really recall, I, I certainly know I, I wasn't like writing that in a journal or, or writing that on a mirror, yeah. you're the next state champion, but it was more of knowing you could do it and knowing that if you're if you're doing everything um, day to day, that, that's, that's that's sort of the, the end product of it. That's interesting. That's, that's really fascinating. Um, and I, I want to dig more into that, but, it, but it's interesting partly because that, that actually is pretty similar to how I view business. You know, I, I founded a company, I actually, I founded two companies, you know, one of them was acquired, one of them, you know, you know, so I've had moments where I've, I've raised capital and like, you know, there are these, you know, there are these things where you, before I had done it, I thought, oh, those must be big celebratory moments. You know, those must be just these amazing, dramatic moments. And in reality, they're the culmination of so many little things that it's Everything actually- you did to get there. Yeah, I- exactly. And, and so it's actually almost never a moment where there's just like a backflip and, you know, it, you know, it just doesn't, you know, and, and, and for a long time, I thought how, how strange that is. Um, but the fact is, is it really, it, it's immensely satisfying. Um, you know, the memories of it, the, you know, the, you know, certain, certain accomplishments, you know, they're, they're absolutely, you know, uh, things that are, that are, that are satisfying, but it's not, it, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's not in the, it, it's not in that kind of split second fashion. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I, I think part of it, um, you know, from an outsider's perspective, when, when you see somebody, achieve success, whether it be at the state level, yeah. certainly the national level, the Olympic level, right? I mean, who, who's not going to say, I'd love to win, you know, Olympic gold medal, yeah. um, right? But, but when, when you, you see those folks, that's not an accident. They didn't drop in that day and, and go win that, win that medal. That's, right. that's, that's the culmination of a life's work yeah. and all that dedication. And so, so when, when you haven't put in the work, you see somebody say, wow, wouldn't that be great if I, if I could do that? <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> phenomenal. Like, that would that'd be you know, how, how could that happen? Um, yeah, but when you, couldn't. when you put in that work, I don't want to say it's an expectation, but it's almost like I've, I've earned that. I did that. Yeah. I, I, I'm here, not be, not, not on accident. I'm here because everything I did. Yeah. I think back to your point on, um, or sort of the corollary into business, one of the things that I appreciate significantly looking back is how much of that does translate to other parts of your life, business, personal yeah. life, all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I see the same thing day to day with the way people, you know, even set up projects. Oh, Hey, we're going to achieve this. And it's like, well, that's, that's pretty aspirational. And then we're talking goals when you say, Hey, it's like a one or two year kind of project. It's not a, you know, do by the end of the week thing. And it always strikes me as odd when someone says, you know, here's the date we're going to hit. It's like, how? But that, that's, that's chosen out of thin air. I mean, yeah. if you work hard at it, maybe, maybe you'll find out that you could have hit that date much sooner. And yeah. it's like, great, then move it up. And if, if you find, if you're working hard at it and you find out that date slips, I, I, I personally don't find any, any issue with that as long yeah. as you, you see it coming and because you know, you're working hard. The only issue is when you're, you, you can't say that you're working hard each day, you're not working efficiently. And then it's, then, then that's a different story. But if you're working hard, it's like, Hey, let's put these more, these more tangible milestones, the ones we can influence. Yeah. Um, and I think actually, you know, just in my business experience, a lot of it has started to shift that way where, you know, you get these sprints and it's like, well, let's just see what we can do by three weeks from now, or two, two, three, four weeks versus the, Hey, five years from now, we're going to roll out the best product in the world. Um, yeah. So I, w- I would say it's pretty similar. 
Yeah, it, it's it's interesting, and all uh, you know, I, I I promise I won't keep going down this this business tangent myself. But the um, and and but you know the uh, you know I think um, my view on on business is you should be doing something that is so valuable that it doesn't matter when what the date is. You know, it doesn't matter. Like you're just you're building something, or you're doing something, or you're creating something that is so important that who cares if it's if it's an hour or a week or a month or a year you know it should be like a 30 year scale basically where you know you're doing something that is just it's just a great idea no matter what the details are yeah and and if you're working hard at it then it's okay that you didn't accomplish you know like you didn't you didn't get that goal by friday yeah If, if, if if you know you're working hard friday wasn't meant to be maybe it's the following friday maybe it maybe it's two years from now it's but you know that you're pushing it that that to me is the, the bigger measure of success is yeah it's just knowing every day that, that you're getting a little closer to it. so so or i'm as I, close as you can get so i'm i'm not sure if we'll figure this out on today's podcast or not but i do think that um i do think that it's unusual to take this approach so strongly in in athletics i think i don't i don't know if that's the case or not I, and now i'm going to be really interested to try to to try to figure that out but you know i know when i talk to people for ba- on the back points uh, podcast here, more often you you hear people talking about, you know, okay, well, I want to be an Olympian, or I want to be a state champion, or I want to be an All-American. And they've got this really, like, this goal that they've articulated, that they are, that they're driving towards. And they may take, I think, a similar approach as you're describing, you know, where, where they love the process and they've got goal and they're, and they're working the process, but they also are really articulating that goal. And then that does translate into a huge celebratory moment once they accomplish it. Um, I mean, we've all seen, you know, the ends of matches and all that where, you know, there, there are backflips and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, um, did you set, you know, at any step of the way, like, were there, you know, were you like, okay, well, I won it as a sophomore, I should really be a three time state champion, like, or I want to wrestle at UVA or, or, you know, like, did you set those specific goals in a memorable way? No, not, not in a memorable way. I, awesome. I think <laughs> part of it was the, the knowing I can, I can, I yeah. can do it. And, and then almost the expectation that if I work at it, I can go get it. Um, so again, I, I, you know, when I think about that, that uh, I want to be an Olympian kind of concept that you just mentioned, again, to me, that, that feels more like a, a guiding light or sort of like that Northern star, yeah. of, you know, that, that's where I'm going. But that's, that's I, 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 still, I struggle to see how, you know, there's nothing you can do. You hear kids say, I want to be an astronaut. Like, well, that's, that's, that's a great goal. What does that, how does that change anything you're doing today? And what it really means is, is that kind of aspiration breaks down into pieces. It's like, okay, well, if you want to do right. that, there, there are some prerequisites. And if you're going to do that, you need to achieve these things. And so, I, yeah, I wouldn't take away from somebody setting that, you know, kind of uh, yeah. that, that guiding light out there. But to me, it's much more about the, like, breaking it down and saying, okay, so if you're going to achieve that, like, you're not going to achieve that by accident. You know, here, here are some right. of the components that you need to build out. And then you can start attacking them because if you don't have that game plan, it's really tough. It just sort of becomes this nebulous, like, oh yeah, you know, hey, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. Okay, great. Yeah. Where, what, what, what came of it? Like, well, nothing. Why not? Yeah. You didn't take any of the steps to get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. you, so. not, you didn't take one step to get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so then it's more just an aspiration than it is something tangible. So yeah, it wouldn't, I wouldn't take away anyone or take away from anyone who, who sort of has that mindset to set the goal that way. Yeah. I just, um, yeah, to, to me, it was more about the, the process, knowing I can do it. And then, then, of course, yeah, there is that expectation. You come back in the next year and, and I guess, expectation and pressure that, like, okay, I did this last year. Like, don't, don't mess this up. Um, but, again, that doesn't come down, you know, if that's your goal for, for you know, if that was my goal for my junior year, winning the state championship didn't affect the way I wrestled, you know, in December. So that, that The goal there was, was win that next match or, like, that's you know, right. perform. So, so it was back to the, you know, hey, if I, if I do everything right week to week, that opens up the possibility that I'll be in the right place to do it, you know, come, uh, come February. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so this, this is great. And I, I, I love hearing this because I, I, like it. I like hearing about successful strategies and approaches that differ from, you know, from, from the norm. And I do think that you, you had, uh, this sounds like an incredibly healthy way to think about it because, you know, it sounds like the way you're thinking about it, it doesn't create 
unnecessary pressure that is going to be hard to, that, that's going to distract you you know if you thought oh i've got to win the state tournament every year in high school then maybe you'd feel negatively about your freshman year when you broke your your collarbone and, yeah, and yeah. That, that didn't seem to enter into it no i so, so that's that's the positive side of it is yeah when you know i i, I wouldn't say i look to look back at that too much and said geez like you know, I didn't achieve that, so therefore yeah. I can't achieve anything. And, and that, to me, is part of that taking stock along the way. And it lets you, you know, you can have a loss, and it doesn't change your in, you know, where you're headed. It's like, okay, that's all, that's all right. You don't like that. Um, on the flip side, what I'll say, though, is, is that, that, that more um, incremental mindset, it makes every match, there's that pressure of, like, mm. you know, I, I, I want to go out there and do my best. And so Interesting. And there's that pressure, too, especially coming off a, um, you know, state championship and, you don't want to have a loss the next season, right? Okay. You've already shown you can do that. So now you don't want to lose. And, and so, so every match becomes the, ne the next match and some are harder than others, but, but every match became like the next, like, okay, this, this is the most serious thing in front of me right now because it's state champions. So that might be three months away, but this match matters right now. So, okay. So, so talk to me about that. So you came back your junior year. Um, you were the defending state champion from day one. Um, what was, what was that season like? Uh, that was that was another good season. Um, I I recall if I recall correctly, I had a two loss, one or two losses that season, and I wish I could could say I remember uh, exactly who they were too. Um, I don't at, the, at this point, but yeah, it was a good season. I, in terms of like the the major tournaments, um, I um, I won the Northern Region Classic. I was happy with that performance. Um, had a good dual season. I think I might have lost to um, the guy from Hayfield that season, uh, but. Uh, in any case, um, had a had a good dual season, went into this district, had a good district tournament, regional tournament, um, state tournament, and yeah, just sort of <laughs> ran ran through it. I, I think that the one thing that I remember being different from my junior and senior year is junior year, yeah, there was this, you know, hey, you're a state champion, can can you go do it again? Um but but that I, I think maybe the mindset shift happened a little bit more in my senior year where it's then it then it shifted to where I had I had enough confidence that it was like there's not a reason I shouldn't be able to do this. Right. Versus my junior year, I had probably more of that same mentality I did the prior year, which is just like, okay, I can go get this, I can go get, I can go get the, that next match, the next win. Um, by the time I had gotten to my senior career, it was almost like I I, I I can do this. So there's there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do this. Um, yeah. And so so the mentality flipped a little bit to instead of just going out to wrestle to win, it was like going out to wrestle to dominate. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I think my results, even in my senior year, just changed incredibly. I think Northern region classic, if I, if I recall, I think I had um, five pins and five yeah. matches, Northern region tournament. I think I had five pins and five matches. I think I wrestled four minutes or something like that. Yeah. So it, it just changed to like, I, I can go, uh, <coughs> go dominate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I remember, uh, I remember seeing that um, and watching you really dominate your senior year. So, um, and that, that's an, that's interesting that, that you actually, you, you brought that mindset with you, you know, you were like, yeah, you know, basic. So, cause some people I've heard, you know, when they were defending a state title, it's so much pressure that they, you know, they, that they end up losing, you know, that, that actually happens quite a bit. Um, and I, I've interviewed a couple folks who, where that happened. And so it sounds like you avoided that in part, you know, in part by everything we've already talked about with your training and your, your, you know, the way you focused, but also because rather than thinking about, oh, I've got to defend this title, you were thinking, I've got to dominate, I'm ready to dominate. I, I think so. I mean, I guess maybe I'm blessed in the sense that, yeah, that doesn't enter much into my mind. Um, I can't say that there wasn't any nervousness, you know, right. certainly my senior year final match state finals like that that definitely enters into your mind it's my last match i'm gonna wrestle in high school like yeah. you know here i am like i was wrestling a tough tough competitor brian Smith uh from cox that year and and i hadn't wrestled him which is another thing too you know uh going back to, to my my losses in my career you know calderwood first match i'd wrestled him didn't have good experience you know and yeah, but I was able to come back my second one. But here I am wrestling at state finals. So like, there's no second chance here with um, yeah. Brian Smith. It's like this, this is my shot. Um, so, so there's probably nervousness there. But along the way, yeah, I, I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say there there was like undue pressure. Okay. To, like go go do what you do. Yeah. 
And uh, and Brian Stiff, if I'm not mistaken, went on to be the runner-up in the NCAA tournament later in his career from Arizona. He, he did really well for himself. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, that that was another example. I don't I don't know him personally, but but uh, very talented guy. You could tell he he um, you could tell he had a, a lot of talent. He had athleticism, um, and clearly he had the, the right mindset because uh, he yeah he went on to do great things. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so um, so you know, now we've, we've gotten all the way through your third state title. Um, what was yeah. the, um, you know, what was your thinking after that? I mean, you were done with high school, you knew, obviously, um, you, uh, I, I, and I believe you went to UVA after that. I did. Yep. Yeah. And what, what was yeah, your but, view on college wrestling? Did you really want to do that? Yeah, were you so excited far, to do it? I, so, so part, part, part of the goal, I guess, if, if you were to say guiding light, uh, would be, my dad used to say this, especially after, uh, after losses would be, you know, you're, you're working towards, uh, yeah, going through high school and, 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 uh, and, you know, going on to like a collegiate career. I don't, I don't recall ever having, you know, like, uh, NCAs in my, my mind, at least of like, oh, well, that, that's like the next thing to go, to go get. Um, yeah. but the biggest thing was, you know, college, um, getting into college, neither, neither of my parents went to, um, to college. And so that was a big thing, like, okay, hey, you know, and, and that changed a lot. So, so wrestling, I mean, not that I, I didn't have sort of the academics to support it, but, but wrestling opened a lot of doors um, mm. and certainly opened a lot of doors in the sense of the schools that I was talking with, um, you know, academic, I'd like to think I could get in any of the schools that I was talking with, but uh, without wrestling. But certainly, it, I, I would just be a number at that point. You know, it's like okay, yeah. got, got good grades, good SAT, all that. But um, but but there's nothing else unique. In that case, with wrestling, it sort of gave a leg up and, and so opened a lot of doors. And that that I think was, uh, you know, maybe on my dad's side, uh, one of the goals. Mm. Um, so so I guess I could say I achieved that. You know, uh, went to went to UVA. I was happy to do that. Um, and so, yeah, so got into to UVA and um, with a number of folks that I wrestled with actually all the way to the bandits. Um, so yeah. Paul Biorlo was there, room with him my first year. Second year, I was room with Paul and, uh, and Matt Gallagher and a guy by the name of Ernesto Vera who wrestled at uh, Lake Taylor. And so, so uh, yeah, a lot of familiarity there going to Virginia versus some of the other schools and, and knowing some of the people there. Um, I think so the biggest thing uh, starting at UVA, I tend to be – sort of an, uh, an all in or maybe like all out kind of guy is um, got there, started working out. And uh, in my first, I want to say week, um, tore my meniscus and had knee surgery. Um, oh, wow. So, so my first season was, was like done almost before it started. Um, that, 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 uh, that led me down the, the path of enjoying college probably too much. My, my first semester, at least for gotcha. sure, you know, it's like hobbling around on crutches, but still like able to make it out and go, uh, <laughs> go enjoy, uh, you know, the college experience. And, uh, and so then, so I got back into it, uh, you know, later in the season, second year, but at, at that point I had actually met my wife, um, and or my, my now wife. Uh, and so, so then, then, then I sort of became all in on that kind of thing. And so, yeah. so wrestling then at that point, it was almost like, well, what am like, what am I doing? If, what am I doing it for? Is it like, what's my next goal? And, and, um, I think there was, yeah, there's a lot of contemplation at the time of like, well, you know, okay, so, so youth league leads to high school and high school leads to college and college leads to, and, and college, I, you know, not to oversimplify, but from my perspective, leads to a couple of things. Um, you, you go on to that sort of Olympic route, yeah. um, which is, you know, definitely the few and, and definitely a, a different kind of lifestyle, um, or you can go the, the coaching route. So a lot yeah. of successful wrestlers in, in college end up, you know, moving on to assistant coach and then and graduate up to, um, to some cases head coach and and both of those didn't didn't really do it for me i guess yeah that uh, just wasn't wasn't what i was what i was in it for so i think at that point that's where i was like why am i doing this and I had plenty of conversations and contemplations deliberations and it's like i i don't know if i want to do this anymore so, so by the time my third season came around about halfway through it, I, was like, I don't i don't think this is for me anymore um then i then i shifted more towards school work and uh and uh you know living life and and um and now I'm actually, I mean, I, I wouldn't take any of that back because now I'm married with four kids and, you know, I have a wife I love, a family I love, doing That's the great. things I love. And so, you know, at the time I was probably questioning it. Now, now I look at it, it's like when, it, when it's not for you, you got to, you got to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one question I forgot to ask was, um, 
during high school, did you have, what, what were your practice partners like? You know, did you have really solid, you know, drilling partners at your weight? I that did. That sort of thing? Yeah, so, so um, the team that came into to Lake Braddock, so what, what happened coming out of that youth league is a lot of people split up. So remember, we, to, yeah. to get that youth league, we, we pulled everybody in. Um, and then, then high school, they sort of split back out. And so you had different people at different schools. You know, even say about, uh, you know, Paul was at, uh, at South Lakes and, and Matt Gallagher was at Herndon. And, you know, we had people in Robinson and, and uh, just like really spread out. We had a couple of those folks end up at Lake Braddock. Um, and so I was able to work out with them. It wasn't always perfect on weight because some of those guys were a little bit bigger and it probably wasn't a bad thing. Um, but between that and, and, um, and, you know, working out outside of, of high school practices and stuff like that, I was definitely able to find um, – sort of the level of practice partner that you need because that's, yeah. that, that's a huge thing as I'm sure you know sure you know you are the company you keep um, that's true in life that's true with wrestling and so you see a lot of times champions coming in pairs because you know you, you don't have so you don't have a standout who's, who's working out with with scrubs that you need you need the people pushing each other um, and so so I, I think we had that and actually come to think of it I want to say my junior year um I want to say Lake Braddock probably took sixth or something in states, which, you know, mm. sixth isn't anything to like write home about. Um, you know, you look at like the Robinson program and, and they're just killing it, you know, sure. to afford for a while. And, um, and so yeah, I, I don't normally in my life look at six as, as a huge achievement, but when I, when I think back to some of the tournaments and like the state tournament, some of those years, if I recall correctly, it might've been my senior year between Great Bridge and Cox, they had yeah. one person at every single weight class. Yeah. You know, somebody at every single weight class, it's hard not to be in the top, you know, one or two. And when I say one or two in the, in the finals of yeah. the, uh, of, of the you know, state finals. So, so for, for a team like Braddock where, you know, you sort of got split up with people and, and we had, you know, I, I'd say probably uh, three, four, maybe five people who were, who were pushing on that and, and generating points for the team to come from that and, and do that well at the state tournament. It's like, wow, that's, that's sort of a, uh, a nice takeaway. Um, so yeah, in terms of practice partners, solid. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, yeah, top 10 in the state was fantastic. I think, um, you know, Great Bridge at the time may have been number one in the country um, in public high schools. Um, I, I know one, I mean, that might have been a year or two later. In any case, they were, they were ranked highly in the country. Um, I don't recall exactly how highly Cox was ranked, but they were great. And there were a number of other really top, you know, stellar programs. Um, and, and, and that actually make, brings me to another question. You've already talked about your mindset, your mentality, and, you know, some guys are intimidated wrestling against the guys from the beach, you know, who are, you know, or, or the guys from Grundy or, you know, just these guys, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. really Christiansburg, yeah. Christiansburg was outstanding then and still is now. Um, you know, did, did you, did, how did you feel when you would wrestle those types of teams? So, so I don't recall us ever wrestling team to team. We we probably would have gotten murdered there, <laughs> going going against Great Bridge and um, yeah. and Cox head to head. Um, in terms of individual matches, I mean, th yeah, those guys were always tough. Um, I remember that was true when I was in in uh, in high school. But leading up to high school, I remember going down to Richmond, Arthur Ashe, uh, you know, whatever arena or I guess not stadium arena, and and for the state tournament back then in the early '90s, and and watching the Great Bridge guys tear it off and look at them like wow that's that is yeah. a, that's an outstanding team um the uh, and so so going into to my my career yeah they always had tough people um i think probably the biggest thing from my perspective wrestling anyone not just from the beach would be if you have a talented person and you you know they're talented but you haven't seen them wrestle that's a, that's that mm -hmm. that was probably the biggest thing where you'd say like okay well, i don't i don't really know what this person does, how they move, how they, yeah. what, what they like to do, what they don't like to do. That was probably the bigger thing of just uh, the unknown of yeah. knowing it's a talented person and you don't really know anything about them. So you either have to figure it out really quick when you're, you're wrestling or you got to hear from somebody else like, Oh yeah, this guy really focuses on flight and this or that um, to try to try to make those adjustments going into it. So you put yourself in the best position. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you did when it comes to great bridge specifically, you know, you mentioned that you had the grand B tapes, uh, the cassettes. We did, yeah. Yeah, so you we went so, down to the Granby thing, Billy Martin. We went to, yeah, we went to uh, Keith Lawrence's Granby school, you know, Granby's camp school, whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did all those things. 
Yeah. So you so you had some idea of what to expect potentially, at least in the broad sense, when you when you had to. If, I guess if, in the system of wrestling, system. yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 W- within that system, and, and especially when you talk yeah. about talented people, that they're generally not just like uh, jack of all trades, kind of like <laughs> mediocre at all things. They, they That's right. generally tend to be like, yeah, no, he's got a really good, in, you know, high crotch, or this guy's yeah. really solid when it comes to blank, and it's like. I guess I'll find that out when he does it, or you know, <laughs> if you can watch a match beforehand and go, okay, he's, he's circling this way. It looks like he favors the like. Okay, I, I can, I can, I can make those adjustments. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you 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 mentioned you have four kids. Um, shifting gears a little yeah. bit here. Um, so you got, you've got four kids. Um, I think your oldest is ten, and I and I think you you mentioned that you have not put him into wrestling yet. Is that right? And that's right. And so yeah, we have a uh, we have we have boy, girl, girl, boys. We have ten, seven, five, and four. And uh, and so for a ten year old, we we played around a little bit. I actually ran, I met the uh, the Drexel wrestling coach by happenstance. Uh, our wives knew each other, and and then both wives, I think, were like, "Oh, your husband wrestles, my husband wrestles." So we we ended up meeting up. Um, and so, he, so we've done some wrestling things here and there with with him. He's had some camps and take my son in. But yeah, we're still we're still working with my son to to figure out uh, sort of what he's what he's going to excel at. Whether it's, yeah. you know he, he excels definitely uh, at school, so we got that. That's a good thing. Um, extracurricular, we're big on that. You know, whether it's sports or music or you you name it, I would take yeah. anything. Writing, I, I don't really care as long as there's something that uh, that he can sort of push himself. All the things that we talked about earlier to make sure yeah. that there's like measurable kind of progress um, that you can see that when you put in the work you can see the reward. Yeah. Um, Cause to me, that's a, that's a huge thing for life. I mean, it's I nice agree. when you're doing the sport you can see it, but it's longer term. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny the the uh, mentality shift at the time, obviously I was coming out from my own perspective as a, as a kid, uh, but I can sort of see some of that in, in the way my parents push me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you're, you're really upset about that loss, really happy about the win, but, but uh, more about the life, life kind of lesson. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it sounds to me like, um, if, if your, your kids go into sports, whether it's wrestling or other sports, you think you would take a similar kind of approach and kind of guiding them through that, 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 that you were given. Certainly on the, the mentality side, I mean, yeah. everything we can, we can do, we're, we're there. I, I can say if, if, uh, either my son's going to wrestling or maybe my, my, my uh, four-year-old will, We'll get in there. He's pretty, pretty feisty. Um, so, so maybe he'll be a wrestler in the family. But the, um, if it's wrestling, yeah, I'm absolutely on board uh, right. with that. The, uh, and some of the other sports, I, I can't say I can help that. My son's right. a basketball coach. My son's in basketball league. And I was thinking, I, I, not only do I have never played basketball, um, I, I'm like the least qualified here to coach. But I can coordinate and I can sub in. I can sub out, all that kind of stuff. But, sure. uh, yeah, so I'm happy to be part of their sport. There's only so many sports I can contribute uh, in terms of meaningful development. So, well, I think that's true of a lot of former wrestlers. You know, we're not the best basketball players usually. I always joke like that's you know I don't, I don't want to hate on any any wrestlers that, that actually are good basketball players. Sure. I, I have almost yet to seen seen any. Um, usually, if if, if uh, you're picking your basketball team and someone identifies as a wrestler, they they should almost certainly be last pick. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, I think that's probably a safe bet. Um, Steve, I really appreciate this this time here. Um, uh, is there any other anything else that that um, uh, that didn't come up here that you wanna you you think we should we should touch on? I don't have anything. I was I was here to, to answer anything you threw at me. Yeah. So hopefully we got a good uh, good podcast out of it. This is a this is a great episode, and I know that the next generation of wrestlers is going to benefit tremendously from uh, from the, the 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 insights you've shared and uh, and just the the story of of your experience in wrestling. So I really appreciate this, and um, and I, I look forward to, to talking again. Thanks for listening to Backpoints today. If you want to support the show. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you find the show. Also, it helps us if you give the show a rating on Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Feel free to also make a donation via Patreon at patreon.com backpoints. Thanks and see you next episode.